Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Ishin EV800D video visors. Now, recently I reviewed the Ishin VRD2s and that is where a lot of people requested a review on this one, so thanks for that request. So here it is and I suppose you could say that the VRD2s and the 800Ds are very similar in price and features. Now, at the point of making this video, I think the 800Ds are around the £70 mark and the VRD2s are at the £63 mark. But please do check the links in the description of this video because the prices change all the time and it makes me look a little bit daft if I mention the price difference in this video. So rather than going through all of the specs etc, I'm first going to explain the advantages and disadvantages of each and then hopefully that will help you decide which to get because there's too many traces these days. Now people always ask me which is the best and sometimes for me there's no clear winner due to everyone's specific needs so let me explain the differences between these two goggles. So, for example, the EV800Ds have a built-in 2-cell 1200mAh battery, which I really like. Unlike all of the other goggles out there, including my Fat Sharks, which usually have an awkward battery hanging off the head strap, the downside of having an internal battery, though, is that if you do a lot of flying, you can't swap out the battery when the internal one gets low. They have thought about this though. You are given a charging cable with a balance plug at the end of it. It is for a 3S, so technically you can have the best of both worlds, which I really like, but I'll probably just stick to using the internal battery with this one, as I don't like wires hanging all over the place. And there doesn't seem to be a solution to hold a spare battery anywhere either, but I guess you could fold it into the top of the head strap or something like that. Something else that you can't do on the 800Ds is adjust the Fresnel lens. I think this is because they have gone for the multi-purpose use of taking the goggle apart and them acting as a monitor as well. Now, adjusting the Fresnel lens is important to a lot of people, but for me, I prefer to have the lens as far back as possible. I find that my eyes strain much less that way and for me the lens on the 800D is in a perfect position but if you struggle with that then the VRD2s have an adjuster on the side and both of these models have a tripod thread underneath it's just that the 800D becomes more of a monitor rather than a pair of goggles on a tripod which is what happens with the VRD2s more or less so I do think that when it comes to user friendliness, the 800D wins, but it is still a little bit tricky with some of the buttons having multi-functions and the instructions don't really explain them very well. So I will go over that in a bit. One thing I do really like is that the 800Ds automatically select between NTSC and PAL sources. The VRD2s require you to do that manually and I found that to be a bit of a pain. I think on the 800Ds the DVR is easier to use. It has just a single button to start and stop the recording whereas the VRD2s you have to go into that separate DVR menu and press record. With these ones it's just a single long press of a button to start the DVR and you get a record icon in the top corner of the screen. There is no change to the original feed, so no dropped frames, and there's no lag or latency. And you can also take a snapshot with a short press of this button here as well, but I definitely won't be using that. Probably use it accidentally quite a lot though. Now, the box they come in says that the DVR is HD, but it is not quite HD. Coming in at a resolution of 720 by 576 So the VRD2s beat that out by offering 1280 by 720p and the VRD2's DVR can record in 16 by 9 as well as 4 by 3 whereas the 
these 800Ds can only record in 4x3. However, I only really use DVR footage as a backup anyways, and compared to the Fat Sharks, both of these goggles have a higher resolution. The bitrate of the 800D is 11 megabit, which is slightly more than the VRD2s at that resolution, but lower than the Fat Sharks 13 megabit at 640 by 480. However, I can't tell the difference at all. So the 800Ds have a built-in speaker and also an audio out. This isn't a feature that I use, but it is a feature that the VRD2s don't have. And this model also has an audio out socket and the audio out socket doubles up as a video in socket, which the VRD2 also doesn't have. You are given a cable here as well for the video in and there's no video out and I guess if you want to use the audio out you're gonna have to use your own cable for that doesn't come with an audio out cable but I guess you'd just be plugging in headphones anyway so other than those things both goggles have a 5 inch screen and both have a resolution of 800 by 480 they both have a menu where you can switch between 16 by 9 and 4 by 3 aspect ratio which is really important to me both have got a 40 channel 5.8 gigahertz diversity receiver with a provided cloverleaf antenna and patch antenna the 800d uses a SMA type connector and the VRD2s use a RPSMA connector if that's important to you but I tend to keep both these days and both goggles have the option to play back the DVR on the goggles themselves now you can't wear glasses with either of these goggles so you might want to go down the fat shark route if you need reading glasses and that's about it for the comparison of those two so let's get into the specifics now of the the EV800Ds. The faceplate is a proper sponge material that looks like it will last but you aren't given a spare. The nose gap is huge which is good for me and my big snout. I did find that I had to spend some time adjusting the three point harness before it would attach to my face nicely. I had to shorten the size of the straps and lengthen the top strap a lot but then they sat quite comfy on my face. There's a little bit of light leakage from the sides where the straps connect to the goggle but the brightness of the screen makes this disappear when you turn them on so it wasn't really a problem in the end. Now all of the buttons are on the top so let's start off with the power button. It's a long press to turn the goggles on and off and the button then doubles up as a cancel button to get out of the DVR menu. This is what is kind of confusing with both of these goggles when the buttons have multi functions I find that confusing. The button that says pick record as mentioned earlier is a long press to start and stop video recording and a short press also takes a photo snap as well. When in the DVR menu, this button also acts as the play or stop video button. The channel and band button works very similar to a VTX on a quadcopter in that a long press lets you change the band, which is also shown on the screen, which is quite nice, and a short press will go through the different channels of that band. Again, that is also shown on the screen. This button has a double feature as well of being a minus button in the screen's menu with the search button being the plus button and that is the same for navigating up and down through the videos of the DVR as well. So to get into that menu you have to long press the SRC menu button then another single press of that button will tab down the different options then you can use the search button to go up in value or the channel band button to go down in value again quite tricky to remember so in this menu you can enter the DVR to watch videos back or change the brightness contrast color sharpness and picture rotation 
and then we also have the volume for the built-in speaker as well then there's this option called power off and that just seems to exit this menu you can change the language here and then lastly you can change the aspect ratio which again is a big plus for me you have to be really quick in this menu though it's a bit of a pain it times out after about three seconds and you can't change that whereas you can on the vrd 2s just makes it difficult to make this video i guess but also difficult when you're trying to take your time trying to remember which buttons to press sometimes the screen disappears before you can find it the src menu button also doubles up as the diversity selector and av selector for the video in so a short press will cycle between both receivers working as diversity or just receiver A working on its own or receiver B working on its own and finally the video in option which shows as a blue screen with nothing connected Lastly, there is the search button which acts as an auto scan feature when not in any of the menus. It will not find the strongest channel though, unlike the VRD2s. Instead, it searches for the nearest channel with a valid picture and then stays on it. It does seem to save the last channel you were on though, which is nice, which means when you power off the unit and then power it back on, it stays on that same channel. On the top we also have the micro SD card slot, now you're not given one of these in the box so I'm using a class 10 here and it doesn't specify what type of card that you should be using. This is a 32GB one here and it's working fine. So on the side there is the charging inlet, you are given a DC style charger and the goggles light up red here when charging and the light goes green when fully charged. Underneath the LED there's also a reset button. I guess if something crashes you can reset the firmware but I've not experienced any problems so far which is good. So the last thing to talk about is the on-screen display on the goggles themselves. As far as I have tried it can't be turned off which is actually the same as the VRD2 so if you have an on-screen display on your copter they can interfere slightly but I found that everything was still readable because the font is actually quite thin so you can still sort of read through it at the top it tells us whether we are using diversity or are selected to a particular receiver then we are also given the band and channel that the goggles are currently tuned to as well as a battery monitor which doesn't seem too accurate to me actually there's only a couple of bars on it there so I'm not sure how useful that is other than that the picture is really clear and I think I prefer the picture to the VR D2s I think it's just because that Fresnel lens is just so far back for me anyway let's go for a fly and see if these goggles are any good and if the DVR is any good well it's really easy to answer those two questions yes they work fantastic as an FPV goggle and the DVR works flawlessly as well now if you remember when I reviewed the Ishin VR D2s the DVR did drop some frames when it switched with its diversity that does not happen with this goggle all right it doesn't do a high resolution of 720p like the VRD2s does and in the 720p resolution of those goggles it's a 16x9 format as well so even though I do really like these goggles I'm still going to be keeping the VRD2s for my 16x9 DVR cameras and if I ever need a high quality DVR then I will reach for those but usually this is fine I mean I think the quality of this DVR is more crisp than Fat Shark's and I do think that Fat Shark is in trouble because these visors they're so much cheaper they do so much more than Fat Shark's and I think the Fat Shark's are a little bit more user friendly because it's just sort of one button and go and this one is more like that but if you want to go into the setup and use the multi functions like viewing the DVR playback which I never use anyway I always put it into the computer so for me I like it because you can just plug them in you can do the auto search and then just long press of that record button it's really easy to see when it's recording just a little icon in the top corner
of the screen it's not intrusive and that's it you're ready to go so yeah really impressed with these goggles I thoroughly recommend them especially for the price do remember though at the moment they are a little bit dearer than the VRD 2s I still think those are worth considering so it all depends on your budget and also if you want the higher quality DVR I think there are more options in the VRD 2s as well but it's just quite complicated going through all the menus etc so yeah there you go that is my review and comparison of the Ishin EV800Ds against the Ishin VRD2s I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful and hopefully will help you decide which visor goal you want to go for so I'll stick a link in the description if you wish to get either of them and I'll leave you with some flying as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers